More than 95% of cervical cancer is due to human papilloma virus, also known as HPV. Hi, I'm Dr. Rachel Clark Sisodia. I'm a gynecologic oncologist on staff at the Massachusetts General Hospital. I'm an associate professor at Harvard Medical School and the senior medical director for Mass General Brigham. And this is Understanding Cervical Cancer. So what is cervical cancer? Well, cervical cancer is a cancer that begins in the cervix, which is at the bottom of the uterus. The cervix sort of behaves as a gatekeeper for when a woman is pregnant and helps hold the baby inside. Cervical cancer is primarily caused by human papilloma virus. One of the first things I always tell my patients is, Almost everyone who has ever been sexually active has been exposed to HPV. There's no stigma in it, there's no shame in it, full stop. Once a woman contracts HPV, most women will clear it on their own over time. Some women, for reasons that we don't understand, will continue to be HPV positive, and slowly that makes the cells in the cervix become more and more abnormal. And in a small fraction of women, this will ultimately make a cancer. And that's why we recommend getting pap smears so that your doctor can continually check you to see if you're HPV positive, and if so, if you've made precancerous cells. It is important to note that some more rare causes of cervical cancer are not caused by HPV, but overwhelmingly the majority are. Anyone with a cervix is at risk for cervical cancer. And one of the most important things that I highlight, particularly to the parents of young girls and children, is that your child doesn't have to be sexually active. Your teenager doesn't have to be sexually active to get HPV, which causes cervical cancer. An unfortunate reality is that one out of four young girls and women in this country are sexually assaulted or the victim of an unwanted sexual interaction. And they could contract HPV then. Other reasons that someone could get cervical cancer or that increase your likelihood of cervical cancer is if you're immunocompromised or if you're a smoker. Cervical cancer is dangerous because it's sneaky, right? You can't see your cervix. It's really hard to actually even feel your cervix. So you could be developing precancerous cells or even a cancer and not know it's there. So unfortunately, the majority of cervical cancer is asymptomatic, which is what makes it hard to detect if you're not coming in for routine checks. So all of this highlights how important it is to see your physician, your care provider, or your OBGYN for care. But if a patient is gonna have symptoms, they would be the following. Bleeding after intercourse, painful intercourse, especially if it's new and painful, a sensation of pelvic pressure or fullness or pain, or increased vaginal discharge. When thinking about the treatment for cervical cancer, I often think of it in three broad buckets. First, precancers, then early stage cancers, and then more advanced cancers. So for a precancer of the cervix, the good news is that a woman or patient with a precancer of the cervix or a dysplasia can come into the office and generally we can fix it with an easy in-office procedure that's quick and relatively pain-free. For early stage cancers, generally we can still cure those, but it's important to know that surgery gets pretty aggressive pretty quickly and that's what's required to cure your cancer. For more advanced cancers, those tend to be harder to cure. And these women are almost always treated with a combination of chemotherapy and radiation. The final thing that I would highlight is that we've made amazing advances in the ability to retain fertility, even if you have cervical cancer. There's many new techniques that we can employ to allow a woman or a patient who's had cervical cancer to be able to retain fertility, be treated for their cervical cancer, and still complete a family if that's what they want. So how do we prevent cervical cancer? Well, there are two great ways to prevent cervical cancer. And the good news is, is we actually cured cervical cancer with a vaccine. Vaccines are 99% effective in preventing cervical cancer. The problem is we've just done a bad job of getting them into all the people who are eligible. Reasons people still get cervical cancer are number one, that they weren't vaccinated, or number two, that they weren't able to get routine pap smears and HPV tests. As a gynecologic cancer doctor, I recommend that you get all your children vaccinated for HPV, regardless of sex. Oftentimes parents will say to me, well, I have a boy, should I get my boy vaccinated? Absolutely you should. 
boys should be vaccinated because not only are boys carriers of HPV, which can infect later partners, but boys are also susceptible to penile cancer, which is also caused by HPV. In addition to vaccines, women or patients with a cervix, age 21 or older, should get routine pap smears and HPV tests. So it's worth repeating that the best news about cervical cancer is that we've already cured it. Vaccines are 99% effective. And in a country like the United States, where there's widespread availability of vaccines, I truly believe that no patient ever needs to get cervical cancer again. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Rachel Clark Sisodia. For more videos on women's health, check out here, and don't forget to subscribe right here.